Hey, what's up guys, it's Blake, and today I'm going to be unboxing the guitar I've wanted for a very long time, about four years exact, and I finally saved up enough to buy one. So today I'm going to be opening up a 1978 Gibson RD Custom in natural finish. I've got my comic book small Peter Pan knife, so let's get into this. This is going to be really messy. This is absolutely huge. It's coming in the original hard shell case as well. I don't know how I'm going to get this out of the thing. It even smells like 1978. Here's the case. You got the faded Gibson logo down there and I'm super excited so I'm just going to Lay this out in front, and I'm gonna open it. And you can see the reaction. Wow! But here it is. This guitar is largely considered one of the uh, ugliest ever made, but a lot of people either love them or absolutely despise them. I'm obviously in the side that absolutely loves them. I love offset styles and the way this kind of combines an explorer, a Firebird, even a Les Paul in some ways as well on the horn. I also think the uh, maple on maple look is really cool as well. So just a little history about this guitar right here. So the Gibson RD line was in an attempt to break into the synthesizer market and offer some new and exciting options in electric guitars that have never really been seen before. At the time in Norland era Gibson, Gibson owned their guitar line as well as Moog synthesizers. The artist version of this guitar, which is the top of the line, the fanciest one, had a full back plate that stretched from here all the way up to the bottom horn that was filled with some crazy active circuitry that featured a built-in compressor, a bright load, a bass boost, all crazy type of stuff for its uh, uh, invention in 1978. So again, there were three models in this line. You had the RD Standard, which is the base, the RD Custom, which is what this is right here, and the RD Artist, which was the top of the line, the fanciest one with all the bells and whistles. Another really interesting fact about the RD is that it's actually a uh, Fender scale length. It's not your typical Gibson scale length, so you got a little more room to work with, and it feels almost like playing a Telecaster from at least the ones I've played in the past. This one, I'll have to get familiar with it before I uh, make claims about that, but again, I'm super excited to have one of these pieces of real kind of guitar history, and this is, I don't know if I mentioned it, but the first vintage guitar that I've actually owned. But just holding my hands, I can tell it feels great, looks great. Uh, the action and the setup is done really well. I can already tell the action's very low. There's no real uh, places where I think the frets would be dead or anything like that. But as you can see, the fretboard is a little worn in some places. And uh, there's definitely some body checking going on all around throughout it. So you can tell this guitar was definitely played and loved by someone who was not uh, a case king. It didn't sit in a case for all of its life. It definitely got out and definitely got the uh, the mileage it needed. But I actually got a very good deal on this guitar and the active circuit, which is their black one right here, which is the one, two switch, is not currently connected. So that's gonna be a project for me to go ahead and get into and work on reconnecting that out. These circuit boards do tend to dry out and a lot of people just didn't like the way they sound, so they just ripped them out in general. So I used to have to go in see if everything is kosher in there and see what I can do to bring that back. But other than that, it is completely back to original. We have original pickups, uh, original frets, original pretty much everything. But now enough of me talking, let's plug this in and see how it sounds across the board.
this guitar are is that it's absolutely amazing. The neck is razor thin, probably one of the thinnest necks I've ever played, uh, especially on a Gibson at least. It, to say it's a 60s profile is definitely stretching thickness a lot because this thing is not thin. I mean, no, I'm sorry, not thick at all. But right out, the action is great. There's no real issues I can pick out with playing. Everything, all the electronics seem good. Everything works out. So I uh, tend to risk a lot by buying guitars off the internet, especially vintage ones, especially in this case. But uh, so far, so good, I think. And I'm super excited to feature this in a ton of videos coming up. But anyway, I hope you enjoy the little unboxing and demo and maybe check out some more videos with this guitar in the future. Thank you so much for watching.